I'm here. Yeah, what's up, Doctor Earl, ladies and gentlemen? All right. So what's going on, man? I, I you probably misunderstood uh, the time zone that um that I work in here. I work at the uh, Central Time Zone here, which uh, means what is eleven over there in the Eastern Time, where you're at is usually about yeah ten to, uh, over here. Yeah, it's like almost one o'clock, or it's actually one o'clock of, of, of for here. Oh wow, interesting! Wow, it's because it's almost at twelve over here. Yeah, I got the message yeah. that you wanted to be to come on your show here and uh, talk about things, whether it's movies, wrestling. Yeah, like whatever. <laughs> All right, we could do that. I was, I know we was, we were supposed to do a wrestling talk, you know, on, on my channel here, possibly, you know, but I figured we'd do that uh, here since we were able to do it on Saturday night there. Yeah. Yeah. So, how was Monday Night Raw? Um, it was alright, I guess. I mean, can't really enjoy it with my fans trying to troll me in my chat room. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw one of I saw that main one in there. You know, I reported it and blo blocked it as well. There, I had yeah, it reported and then, there. Like, yeah, and like other than that, like uh, <laughs> I guess it was okay. Like I give it a six out of ten for tonight. Oh wow. So uh, uh, what? So were you hoping it'll be be a lot more uh, improved in terms of the entertainment wise or stuff like that? Yeah, I mean it's uh, like uh, the the main event was like uh, Maurice and uh, the Miz. Uh, they uh, um, they <laughs> wanted to, to do renew their wedding vows. I think it was just a promo to do on the on Edge or whatever. Yeah. So like that was okay, but like to me, it didn't even feel like a wedding without renewal. Like it's just let me, like a let me guess like a promo. Let me guess. Uh, Edge came out there to disrupt yeah, the whole thing. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Yep. That happens all the time. It did. And Triple H did it with uh, Edge and uh, Vicky Guerrero many years back. You know, uh, Rusev and Liv Morgan did the same thing with Lana and Bobby Lashley. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, um, we was, uh, um, Wire and Keith was supposed to be there like the whole three hours, but, uh, Wire, I mean, I'm not mad at him or anything, but, uh, like, like, Wire decided he wanted to go to sleep early and, uh, and, uh, all of a sudden, uh, Day Rose wants to karaoke stream and, mm. and, and, like, uh, I heard some of that, man, yeah. And then, uh, then Keith's like, I, I want to go listen to Day Rose sing. I'm like, okay, oh my we'll go gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, then Keith the uh, bells on me. So. Wow. And then I'm, I'm like, okay, we'll go. Then go listen to Day sing then. And yeah, I think, but it was about 35 minutes, I guess. Yeah. No. <clears throat> Yeah, so like I'm like okay, uh, so then I tried to do a solo and then then, then the chat room started to troll on me when I oh, tried yeah. to do a solo show. Like, I think I think I think those accounts. What I understand uh, when me and YR was live on together on Friday evening there on Christmas Eve I should say. Yeah. There was someone in my chat saying half of those uh, troll accounts are way over from either India, UK, or some foreign ass yeah. country there. So it really bum it's bummer that you're unable to find out who's doing those things, let alone find out where they live. So the only thing you could do is you know just block them, report them, yeah. you know just keep an eye check because these people have no lives. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's all you can do. That's all you can ever do. You know, I'm sure you can scream and holler deep down the side, but yeah, you know, that's a, all they want. <laughs> they want you to get triggered. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I suggested many times before. Don't let yourself get triggered. I made that mistake many times, and it got me really nowhere. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, Raw <laughs> tonight was okay, but I might have to go back and rewatch it maybe uh, later late tonight. Oh. And, uh, so I can hear the commentary and all that good stuff. I really am. You know, I I stopped watching Raw many years back when I first moved here in Texas because when I first started watching it again, because mm -hmm. back at the house of living in Detroit, there was no um, there was no really a cable there. 
All they yeah. had was some of the, all these little things up there that whether it was Hulu TV or something like that, you know. But yeah. I, I stopped watching. And when I lived in Richmond, Richmond, Michigan, for about seven years, I didn't have any cable, could let alone afford it. So I had to rely on the WWE magazine, which would come yeah. out each month when that still existed, you know, to realize what the heck is going on there. But after a while, yeah. the whole thing just became the more like a WWE Kids magazine, you know, like trivia mm -hmm. this, trivia that. It's like, you know, give us a break, you know. It's yeah. becoming too much you know, family entertainment stuff. And I yeah. think the reason, and when I started to watch it raw again, I was like, who are these guys? Who the hell is the Shield? Who the hell is Roman Reigns? Who the heck is this uh, Bailey chick? Who the heck is this person? Like, I, I don't really know this. And why in the outright mind is the audience sitting on their asses, you know, just keeping quiet, you know, and uh, nothing's really happening. I mean, like, I just still, are you still doing that today? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> No, nah, no surprise there because I know for some reason the WWE crowd at some of these events here, whether it's Law, Raw Live, or SmackDown, it's just like, mm, blah, blah, ah, whatever. I mean, like, the last time Kane came out, it was as a, he was like a mystery opponent towards Dolph Zinger. Nobody really stood up. Nobody would take notice. Everybody would just sat yeah. on their asses. I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about Dolph Ziggler. Yes. Yeah. yeah, man. Well, either way, either way, Kane would come out, whereas in the past, when Kane came out with that fireball intro of his, oh, yeah. everyone yeah. stood up, they took notice, they would cheer, they would boo, whichever. And they weren't doing that that time, one time when I saw them. It's like, yeah. what the heck? Are you giving me, I mean, come on. It's not what it used to be. You know, it's just, and, and plus, you know, when you think about it, the entertainment aspects that had gotten so cheesy, so, I'm like, here's the thing, I spoke about this many times before, the, yeah. the, stro the storylines, the scripts, the things that they say, including the promos, there's something like, uh, you remember the show Super Friends with the 1970s, yeah. that cartoon series? I grew up watching that. Yeah, yeah, I grew up watching that. Yeah. The storyline, the the dialogue that they used to say on that show is so, somewhat similar to what they're saying now. Yeah. When you look at it, I mean, it just doesn't really make that much sense. You know, like, whereas back in the uh, Ruthless Aggression era days, back in the um, New Generation era, the Golden era, or especially the Attitude era, they would cut promos that would hit you, that would strike you the most sickest. I mean, like, there were the promos that Randy's Macho Man Savage did when he was in WCW towards Hulk Hogan that were outright masterful, mastering. That was just powerful. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, I remember back in the day when uh, uh, when King first came on the scene, uh, when he ripped the hell of a cell off the cage. Yep. Yes, I remember that. Yes. Like that gave me chills up at that much fine. Like you don't get that feeling no more. Yeah, I man. And by the way, credit to Kane, you know, the Glenn Jacobs who played Kane for um umpteen yes. years there. He yep. was like one of the he's now the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee, by the way, there. Yeah, yes he is. Yes, and you know what? Just give this man credit. He's portrayed way before Kane, he was Doctor Isaac Yankum. Yep. Uh, DDS, he was uh, Jerry Lawler's uh, dentist. Yeah, he was also the main opponent for um for Bret the Hitman Hart, who, as you know, yeah. uh, uh, Lawler was that. beef with at that time there. He also yeah. was Doomsday yeah. in the USWA for a number of years. Yeah, he was. Uh, he fought uh, <laughs> Bret Hart at SummerSlam. Yeah, and of course he lost. Yep, I remember that. But yeah, so uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, he had a beef with uh, uh, Jerry Lawler, and then uh, then Jerry Lawler, you're gonna face my personal dentist, Doctor Isaac Gake of DDS, yeah. and mm -hmm. I was like, a like, psycho, a psycho dentist, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I of remember course, that. yeah, it was. You know, what's kind of funny is you know, some of the most interesting characters that you have seen in the wrestling were usually played by one person. I'm going to give you a name of an interesting individual here. You remember yeah. one half of Demolition, Axe or Smash? Oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah. uh, the Repo Man just as well there? Yep. 
Do you remember yeah. Crusher Khrushchev in the NWA alongside yeah. the Russians? Yeah. The man who portrayed those three characters, his name is Barry Darso. Yeah. He was like one of the, he had many characters with him there. And now we find out, you know, he was never really Russian to begin with. He was made to be like that. And also yeah. Nikita Koloff, his real name is Steve Simpson. Yeah. And he's from Minnesota, for I understand. And I guess Ivan Koloff wasn't really Russian himself there. Yeah, it's just, it's funny, like, how years later you find out, like, they're not really, like, like with Rusev, for example, uh, mm -hmm. you thought he was Russian all, all these years, and it turns out he, he lives here in America, and, and like, now he's with AEW under his real name, uh, Miro. Miro, yeah. Which is uh, which I'm glad he got away from that no from the mess that is the WWE because and I say it's a mess because when you look at all the bullshit that has been going on within that company I mean like when the, for instance let me go let me just talk about something that really freaked me out you know and not, it's it was their business and not only the way they've been letting go of everybody but also their business practices I mean like. During last year, you know, AJ Styles, Paige, and a few others had to do a Twitch streams to, to support themselves, because during that time they only had you know, you know, two options of wrestling, Raw and SmackDown, which was started out at the Performance Center and then later moved to the uh, Thunderdome. Yeah. And I understand they're going to be doing that again pretty soon there. Uh well, that's just a rumor because uh, I don't think they could afford it because they just announced some new uh, dates on, on Raw tonight. So I know, I yeah, because you know you got to keep the show going. I mean, like because they can't afford it. Exactly, and plus, you know, the Thunderdome as much as a good idea that it sound like it. It's, the audience was all taped. It was a taped audience. It was a taped booze. Yeah, we know that for a fact. Yeah, but you know, but seeing wrestling shows like Raw and SmackDown, where you know, there was nobody in there, just a, a nobody. I mean, everybody else was doing that. Impact Wrestling, you know, Ring of Honor was doing that. You know, AEW did that yeah. for a while there, but now AEW I've got to give them credit for it because they later decided to move to that place called Daly's Place, so located down in Florida. There, they did that for a good long set of months there, which was pretty cool because you had this huge amphitheater all to yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's what got AEW off the map was that having that uh, amphitheater all, all to themselves. Yeah. Well, AEW was more was definitely more uh, destined to make it big from the first pay per view that they did, you know, the All In, where they, where they, John Moxie emerged out of there after being Dean Ambrose for so many years there. That, for I understand, that pay per view really set it off for AEW, which you got to say when you hear the crowd at AEW, you could say that they're a lot more twenty times alive than what the WWE crowd is. Now, was you uh, was you a big? Did you ever watch the TNA wrestling back in the day when all the uh, wrestlers were, were down there? Um, I never really watched a TNA when it was called TNA. You know, at that time, like I said, I yeah. didn't have a cable, let alone uh, alone a TV uh, where I lived in Richmond, Michigan during that time. But I would yeah. listen here. We often read uh, reports in wrestling magazines, like a uh, pro wrestling illustrated there and uh, other stuff yeah. there. I would listen, I would hear all the stories going on, what's going on with Hulk Hogan, Sting, Mick Foley, all those guys there, you know. And we hear about all the bullshit that was going on with the other in the other pr promotions, like the independents. Yeah. And then uh, nowadays with all this YouTube, with all these streaming services, you're able to find out the whole full details on like kayfabe commentaries where they interview Jim Cornette, Hillbilly Jim, Vince Russo, all these insiders. They had an interview with Brutus Beefcake, who by the way one time said he hated doing the barber gimmick back in the 80s there. Yeah. I mean, and it's also no secret that Cody Rhodes hated being Stardust, but that's what he's been told to play. Otherwise, he'd be out of a job. Rhea, yeah. Rip Rhea Ripley, believe it or not, she even stated that if she didn't cut her hair, she would be let go. Yeah. Because, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed all these uh, characters back in the day when it went like I thought uh, Stardust Cody's character was, it had some potential, just it didn't go nowhere. Because they, I don't know what it is. A lot of star people, a lot of performers in that company were felt like they were being buried. Another example, yeah. Lana. She was facing Nia Jax almost every week on Raw and always ended up losing. Yeah. Turns yeah. out she was being punished because her husband, who they let go, was now performing as Miro in AEW. So they took yeah. that anger out on her. Yeah, and now there's rumors going around that Lana might be going to AEW soon. I hope so, because, you know, they're married, you know. Yeah, so why not, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, it'd yeah. also be... A... Now, with all the people that that company has let go, do you, yeah. I think, wonder, you know, <clears throat> what, do you, what do you think the real reason is? Do you believe it's budget cuts? Do you think it's because they just don't want to deal with these performers no more? Because... I read here in the source, and in fact, I did even a vlog on this, is that the reason Bray Wyatt was let go the way he was, because apparently to them, he was being difficult. But then again, to to the people out there who are fans of his work, fans of his promos, the fans of his performance in there, whether it's the physical or vocally, he was trying to protect his character, protect his gimmick. Because you know yeah. the WWE has been known to twist things around, you know, to make it more yeah. subtle. Like, for example, Nikki Cross, when she got in there, he was she was considered the twisted sister of NXT. The psycho Scottish girl yeah. who ran around there throwing her vest around, bam, bam, over the ring. <laughs> Someone like, um, you put the Joker makeup on her, she would be a perfect fit for that. Oh, yeah. My God, she'd be a good Har Harley Quinn. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And plus, you know, now, now they've made her into this little gimmick called, you know, Nikki Ash. Ash being an almost superhero. Yeah. Mimicking, mimicking Hurricane Shane Helms years yeah, before. That, yep. And I'm sorry, but that was a little bit of a cheese ball right there. There. Yeah. But yeah, because now, if you really want to talk about old school wrestling, I remember growing up back, uh, like, uh, when I was a kid, like, um, like, like I said, my first WrestleMania was uh, WrestleMania Six, and uh, that's the, the first ever WrestleMania. But uh, then when I got uh, my like next year, like um, my dad's uh, my dad's like, hey, like here's WrestleMania uh, five, four, and three, and mm. like he saw that like WrestleMania Six, and he's like, here's four, five, and three, and like oh, wow. we started to watch all the rest you know <laughs> nice my, so my i remember guy. my first wrestlemania was the first one back in 1985 you see i started watching wrestling with the wwf it was used to ran on sunday mornings at 11 a.m eastern when i was still in michigan and one of the the performers at that time as we all know was but now called the at the uh excuse me golden era as it was called nowadays yeah. Brutus Beefcake, Luscious Johnny Valent, Greg the Hammer Valentine, Junkyard Dog, Tito Santana, and of course, yeah. you know, the, the one that really got me into watching wrestling was Piper's Pit. Only for a few minutes with Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Yeah. There was some I... of the there was something about Piper that I dug. You wasn't a fan of Piper? I was. I was more a fan when we think about it, I was more becoming more a fan of Piper than I was of Hogan, who was the big star at that time. Mm. Remember, he was a world heavyweight champion. He was uh, drawing all this, say, all this money, you know. And so, a couple years when that, well, after the first WrestleMania, which was a massive success, wrestling really got off the ground. And also, they got to thank Cindy Lauper for putting Captain Lou Albano in a couple of her videos. Yeah. They decided to make that into a, hey, let's turn this into a wrestling gimmick storyline there. Captain Lou Albano gets starstruck. He says he manages Cindy Lauper. He says he started Cindy Lauper's career. 
Cindy yeah. Lauper comes on Piper Spit and says, oh, that's not true. I love Lou, but he's not my manager. Then Lou comes out there and starts berating her. And then she, all of a sudden she smacks Lou around there, all strikes Piper. And then they have a little thing called um, the Brawl to Settle It All, I think was that. It's where um, Cindy Lauper would have Wendy Richter and you know, Captain Lou Albano would have Fabulous Mula representing him. Now, Fabulous Smoothies, you know, have held the women's championship in that company for how about 28 years, I think it was. Yeah. And well, and basically, and Wendy Ricker with the ruse loses. I mean, excuse me, the Fabulous Mula loses the match. Wendy Richter becomes the new champion, and it's all set, you know. <clears throat> now, also, you got to remember that. Other WWE Hulk Hogan at that time was still met pretty much you know a big star thanks to was not just beating Iron Sheik that year but also because his performance in Rocky Three taking on Sly St- Sly Stallone and yep. Mr. and remember Mr T was in attendance there and they're watching that on there his character Clubber Lang. Now that that was a awesome uh, thing uh, or storyline they did with the Rocky Three when uh, when Hulk Hogan uh, was was in the movie. I thought that was yeah. excellent. I thought that was just perfect storyline. It was perfect. Comedy. It was interesting because a couple of promotions have done that in the past. They had Muhammad Ali with some Japanese wrestler and some uh, Japanese event there. That was going crazy there. And they have a couple, yeah. remember they also had a football players and other athletes from different sports come in there and take on, on the wrestler. I think it was Andre the Giant against this other athlete there. And uh, and compared to this, yeah. now no matter how big you were, being bigger than Andre the Giant, I'm sorry, that doesn't cut it now because this man was a bohemian. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, the wrestling stuff I remember back in the day, or the, they was like way different back then. Back then, in other promotions like the NWA, you didn't have all these super buffs, superhero status guys with the uh, superhero bodies. But then again, that's what Vince McMahon wants. He wants it to be superstars, superheroes, role models, you know. <clears throat> Whereas Arn Anderson, Ole Anderson, Dick Murdoch, Dusty Rhodes. Had their natural bodies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because uh, people started really working out, like towards, uh, like once things started, like getting more recognizable, like towards like the year two thousand, like that's when yeah. people started like really working out. Yeah. We mean everybody, or in the in the WWE roster, basically. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well. The thing that gets me about the WWE nowadays is so not just the business practices that's been going on. I mean, let me give you a scenario. AJ Styles, Paige, I guess Zelina Vega, and her husband, the former Aleister Black, you know, they were told, informed by uh, Vince McMahon about stop streaming on Twitch, I guess. Because yeah. apparently... Um, for some uh, revenue reason for something I don't know what it was and Paige I saw in a in the thing she did on her uh, page there on her Twitch stream she was really in almost in tears because this was just, at that time her only way of earning money because she was unable to wrestle because of the neck issues that she had you know got to think about that many wrestlers you know find themselves out of work yeah I mean like Steve Austin Ric Flair Many others there. They have to do. They have to do podcasts on for whether it's the Westwood One or a Podcast One or CBS Radio. <coughs> Excuse me, Ric Flair. He had a thing called Woo Nation that was on. I guess CBS you know, Radio. I think it was. Then it became the Ric Flair Show, and now it's Rick. F- now it's Woo Nation uncensored. Yep. And I saw I saw a couple of videos about that. You know, and I hope Ric Flair gets himself, you know, makes himself some good money through this deal here. They should have it yeah. on Spotify like they did with Joe Rogan, you know. Yeah. <coughs> because, you know, for understand, he's been in need of money for a long time there. 
that's why I guess he decided to to wrestle once again after his retirement in WWE to do more wrestling in TNA. Now, let me ask you a question, <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Earl. Yeah. Uh, who is your... Um... Who was your favorite wrestler growing up, uh, like between like the eighties and the nineties? Oh yeah, no question, Rowdy Roddy Piper, because he was yeah. a he was a psycho when he got in the ring there. Yeah, not, like now, did you have a second favorite? <laughs> well, I think my I think I don't know remember if I really had a second favorite favorite there, but I do remember um, my ma was a favorite of Paul Orndorff, Mister Wonderful, rest in peace. Yeah. And I, I think, I don't know if my sister was really much into wrestling at that time. I remember, but there was another one I, I dug was Jesse the Body Ventura. Because he was in a, all the heavy metal like I was at that, that time there. Yeah. In fact, uh, he released a single called Body Rules, which he dedicated to all this, those who served in uh, Vietnam. Because apparently he was involved in that war. He was a Navy SEAL uh, many years before that. Yep. Now, and, now since you're uh, since you're an uh, old school guy, was you a big uh, Ric Flair fan back in the day when he was in WCW? Well, I didn't really watch that much WCW because they twitched. Uh, because they, remember, they switched the time zones around. I was more of a fan of him and all the others, Dusty Rhodes, Magnum T.A., okay. the Arn Anderson and Ole Anderson, the Frigidal Four Horsemen, back in the, yeah. the N.W.A. when it was uh, Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, uh, every Saturday night, at, uh, I guess it was at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, we would tune into the TBS Superstation to see... You know, World Championship Wrestling is sanctioned by the NWA, National Wrestling Alliance. And I remember seeing Tony Schiavone, which, by the way, is still remains one of my favorite broadcasters next to uh, the late Bobby, Bobby Heenan and the late Gorilla Monsoon. My dad used to love those two, which I'll get to later on. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I grew up... Uh... Like what really got me into wrestling was uh, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. Like they got me hooked into wrestling. Like they won me over with their com commentary. Oh man, did you love it? They love the stuff that they were stuff they were doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my my dad loved them so much. He would laugh along with the, with the things that they were saying there. Those two hosts in prime time wrestling was yeah. I was just about to say that dude. Like when they were doing the shows on the prime time wrestling, like yeah. like like there are times yeah. when uh, like like uh, I think when uh, when Bobby Heenan was trying to trigger uh, Gorilla Monsoon and, and like uh, like you know that, you, that's his classic stuff when Bobby Heenan is trying to trigger a, a monsoon every now yeah. and then yeah. and with his crazy rants <laughs> yep and then and, he's like oh boy I want to be in trouble later <laughs> yeah I know and monsoon I've got a couple of times will put Heenan in, in his place yeah but yeah go, go ahead and talk about some other because I got to turn on my heat like I, I'm hot in my place like, is it cold talking. is it cold up there uh, no, it's actually warm. That's why I got to turn off my uh, my heat for a minute. Turn off your heat. I see there. I thought you meant you were going to turn it on there. But like I said, you know, the I remember stuff like, you know, when um, I didn't really watch that much, you know, WCW when they uh, switched it over there. For some reason, it kind of fell out of it when it became uh, WCW. But watching the NWA, Baby Dow. Tully Blanchard, watching the uh, Ole and Arn Anderson, known as the Minnesota Record Wrecking Crew, the Nature Boy Ric Flair, Magnum T A, you know, they were like considered the big dogs. Oh, we, we cannot forget the Raging Bull, Manny Her Hernandez. You know, we cannot forget, you know, uh, this dude named Rocky King. And of course yep. we got we got, you can't forget Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express. Jim Cornette oh, yeah. came some really crazy promos when he was um, with the Midnight Express. He would do all yeah. the crazy talking. He would say things like, uh, and what about James J. Dillon, 1988's poster boy for Alzheimer's disease? 
Yeah, now is uh, is Arknonia a fan of the old school uh, wrestling? I think so. Yeah, he could tell you a lot of stories about the old wrestling. Yeah, dude, I, would the, some, yeah. bro, I would love to hear some old school stories of, of wrestling from uh, Ark. Yeah, he could tell you possibly tell you about world class championship wrestling, where which was started here in Texas, in which featured the Von Ericks. Yep. And of course we could. Well, of course, you know, he could probably you know, talk to you about all the wrestling stories he had. In fact, there was a, I was trying to get a hold of this uh, lady named uh, Ashley Rose Nova, who's a freelance journalist for various wrestling online publications. Yeah. I contact, uh, I was in her Twitch stream a couple of night, weeks back, and I asked if she wanted to be a guest on my channel here. And I yeah. asked him when I asked her if she wanted to um, you know, be a part of it to talk about wrestling, past, present, future, kind of like what we're talking about right now. You know, I tried to find her on Skype. I think I did find her, but I said, is this you, your, your account by chance? But I didn't think I, uh, I don't know. I never got a response since that, you know. Yeah, now, uh, did you ever meet any wrestlers back in the day? Yes, only one, Scott Steiner. And this was back okay. in 2002 when he was at what was known as the Star Bar in Clinton Township, Michigan. Yeah, and uh, was he in his big Papa Pump gimmick back then? Yes, he was. You know, uh, I saw I saw who he was, and I went up and introduced myself to him. I guess we got a picture taken with him, with him right. and uh, I see, saw a couple times there. How you doing, brother? How you doing? And uh, the girl I was uh, with that time, she was like very surprised. She was like, "Yeah, got an autograph." Oh yeah, I also got an autograph from him as well. And, some other girl that I dated, she saw that up on the wall. It's like, oh, you met Scott Steiner. Yay. Mm -hmm. now, now, I told this story several times, but I don't know if anybody really believes me. But I, I met Stephanie McMahon backstage at a pay-per-view. I, I think I told this several times on my mm. channel before. I didn't, hear, I didn't hear about this. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, at the last, uh, either at Fastlane back in 2016 or whatever, mm. like before I came into the community. Ah. It was like back in, like, it was either Fastlane or Money in the Bank, and I met and I got to meet Stephanie McMahon uh, backstage. That's nice. How'd you get backstage there? Um, just by uh, luck and patience. <laughs> oh, so did did you sneak in there? Or did you know, somebody hand you a backstage pass or? Uh, I just uh, persuaded the security guard somehow. <laughs> oh, no. The last time I was the only time I was able to go backstage without a without any pass was um, Skinny Puppy back in uh, 1990 at the Latin Quarter in Woodward Avenue in Detroit. We all waited yeah. till I we all waited till the security all the security team decided to go home so after a couple minutes after we did that i walked i snuck by up there up there in the upstairs area and there they were everybody was there some of the grow crew and the yeah. band themselves and next thing you know the other people that was uh, waiting outside they decided to walk up up there as well yeah uh because uh at I almost didn't get a chance to meet her, but the guy, this is how I really got the mirror. The, the guy said, like, okay, I want to take a risk here by letting you backstage. And ah. say, if you get caught, say you don't know me, just say you, just say you stuck backstage. All right, there. Oh, so, but you at least, but at least you kept yourself in check, yeah. you know, so you didn't get yourself in trouble there. Yeah, so, uh, so I told good. him. To, yeah, so I told the guy like, yeah, I was like, I got your back. Was like, I won't, I won't, like, uh, like this. Uh, I won't set your uh, good. Know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because you don't want to cause to do this job there. But, but yeah, so like he's like, I'll let you back there. Like, but if you get caught, like, don't say that I let you back here. Like, uh, uh, like I can get in trouble. I understand it there. Yeah, there are some good uh, security guards out there. There. Yeah, that's how I was able to meet Stephanie. That's good, you know, and and this uh, probably uh, I take. Oh, that's right. I was going to say, you know. Uh, I was going to ask him if Triple H still had his hair, but I realized, no, he cut it ages before that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now check this out. My brother's wife, my brother's wife, uh, she met Triple H at, at some uh, random uh, convention place uh, mm. back in 2005. Wow, interesting. That's cool there. 
she had a she had a full blown conversation with him too, and mm. uh, she's got pictures uh, with him. Oh, good. That's glad to hear that. Don't probably hold on to that. You know, this is probably yeah. when he still had his hair, correct? Yes. Oh yeah. Those are the, definitely those are pictures are keepsake because you know he likes to keep his hair massively short with that long ass beard now. Yeah, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah. She uh, yeah she met him at some uh, a random convention place uh, and mm-hmm. somewhere here in Columbus, and uh, they was at the Arnold uh, uh, Classic thing or whatever. Ah, yeah, I think that's where she met because my. It was uh, my brother didn't get to meet him, but uh, she was trying to find my brother and or, or her husband, and like, and I guess she got lost in the shuffle, like with the crowd somewhere, and and like, I guess while well, she's trying to find uh, my brother, and and so she's like, you know, I guess she sees Triple H coming out somewhere, and I guess she might have been like backstage maybe like maybe close to where I don't know how she managed to meet him but uh but she told me she had like a like an hour of full blown conversation with Triple H. Ah, interesting. You know, a, that's one of the few few great moments that yeah, anybody could have with a well known celebrity now. Yes. And since cele- the star the wrestlers had to become celebrities themselves. And here's yeah. something else that you ever notice. Yeah, they've they've done this a couple times in the past with with John Stewart being involved with uh, John Cena and such. They've done yeah. this a couple times, but back then, you know, having celebrities, whether it's Pam Anderson being involved with Diesel, Big Daddy Cool. I remember Ozzy Osbourne backing up the British Bulldogs at the second WrestleMania. Yeah. You know, Liberace being a timekeeper. You know, Joan Rivers being the bell ringer for the main event. All that for the main event at the first WrestleMania. Yeah, now yeah. now it started they stopped doing that for a long while there because now the wrestlers themselves have become celebrities. Yeah. And I guess they decided, you know, just hey, <clears throat> we could also have to cut back on here because a lot of these celebs, you know, probably demand big bucks, you know, to make these small appearances there. Yeah. In a yeah. lot of way, a lot of ways. When you think about it, they have become celebrities. I mean, when you think about it. Now let me ask you a question. Now, was you a fan of the NWO when they came on the scene? Actually, yes, I was. Now let me ask you this also question. Now, when they split up, was you a NWO a NWO Hollywood or was you an NWO Wolfpack? It was more NWO Wolfpack. Uh, okay, I was more I was more NWO Hollywood right. Hogan. I was with the black and white. I am. You know what's, uh, what? I was a big fan of the NWO. The reason why the NWO made it so big because it was such because it was new. This was different. You know, people were tired of Hulk Hogan doing the saying your prayers, train, yes. eat your vitamins, this and that. There, and you got to remember Hogan's kind of reputation was kind of like you know dismantled when it was revealed that he did do steroids back then. There were a lot of people um, were upset at that. You know, that's kind of like going against uh, the grain of what he used to preach in his old promos with the WWF. Yeah. And you gotta, and plus you gotta remember, the Hulkamania running wild over you gimmick had kind of like you know, died yeah. down so much there. There was a few, inc- few incidents where he would walk out and be booed by the crowd. Yeah, cause they got bored with it after a while. So Hulk Hogan turning heel the way he did was not only a shock, but you know what? It was it was needed. I remember yeah. seeing the whole thing yeah. at a, on the yeah. TV. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, his character was getting still. Yeah, so they had to come up with something new. And when you think about it, this was in 1996. The whole 90s was anti-establishment altogether. You know, the mm-hmm. the the family values idea had gone out the window. People were embracing alternative ideas, especially the young kids around that time, which, by the way, they still embrace today. And these are the, I've mentioned a few times, they're the ones running Twitter, Facebook, you know, speak it, about God, speak it out against anything, you know, that's conservative or traditional, you know. Yeah. So because yeah. to them, you know, tra- that's the tradition they grew up with, not this yeah. other tradition. 
Now let me ask you a question. Was you a fan of Shawn Michaels back in the day? Eh, not too much there, you know. It was it was okay at the time, but yeah. But it was more of a big fan of uh, Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Oh, Diesel, because uh, he is from uh, your former state, Michigan, right? Yeah, Detroit, Michigan, Kevin Nash. Now, when you lived in the Detroit, um, was, was you close to uh, Eminem's uh, like backyard? Any like eight mile? Like, no, out? I wasn't. I really wasn't. During that time, I was living in. We, we lived in three areas. First, it was yeah. in Detroit. Then we moved all the way, moved all the way to Roseville, which was a few long gone miles. We lived for there for many, many years. And then yeah. uh, some stuff happened, and I ended up in an area called Richmond between Mount Clemens and Port Huron. Yeah. I had to stay there for about seven years until I moved back to Detroit to be with my girlfriend at that time. Yeah. Now, was mm -hmm. you a, a, a fan of the Macho Man, Randy Savage? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I did dug him a lot. You know, he came up with a lot of good persona there. You know, he came a lot of good stuff there. And he had the the ultimate heel style when he was in the WWE, the I mean, best, WF. The best he ever did was the Macho King heel. I think yeah. that, that was the best ever, the Macho King one. The be You know what, the best period was when he was uh, beefing with Kevin Nash at WCW, you know. Yeah. He was like, yeah. you know, saying things like, I'm, he's going after Kevin Nash because I want you to hand me that belt meaning the WCW world title, hand me that belt the same way you handed it to someone else regarding, yeah. of course, to the finger poke of doom. Yeah, the, they had beef uh, in WCW uh, after they uh, split up from uh, the Wolfpack. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But it, was all, but it was all comical beef when you look yeah. at it there. It was all yeah. comical beef. I mean, it... <clears throat> Yeah, I remember when Nash and Macho Man had beef uh, uh, after they split up from the Wolfpack. Yeah, no, I kind of missed the Wolfpack because it was something new and something uh, daring there. I remember people, you walk into a 7-Eleven and say, which NWR are you? Uh, are you Wolfpack or Hollywood? You know, yeah, and dude. I, yeah, we used dude, to get I, that all the time. Yeah, like you would go into, I remember that, dude, like when you go into a gas station or a Blockbuster video, like you would see people with the, their NWO shirts on, like they would ask you, like, "Are you with the, the black and white, or are you with the red and black?" And <laughs> hmm. it was that was some fun times. I would, then. I would, I had to, no, I had originally had an NWO white, red, black, red and oh, no, actually NWO white and black, and um, I was just, you know, I yeah. took these uh, magic markers that I had just colored it with yeah. blue red and everything just to fuck with them you know just to make them like what which nwr is that you know like <laughs> you walk away and not answer their dumbass question yeah like now <laughs> when i walked into a blockbuster video i didn't get i, I came across some wolfpack uh crowd i was never i was never a wolfpack i wear my nwo black and white proudly i wear i wear it for life like I was in W Hollywood. I didn't give a fuck because, mm. like, like I came across some Wolfpack fans. I I flicked them off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's fit to say that the NWO were indeed the Sex Pistols of pro yeah. wrestling. Yeah, the they were more about the females and all that stuff. No, it's not about that. They're not the females. It was about anti-establishment. Or, or yeah, that or yeah. It was about you know tearing down the old walls and building new ones. That was mm -hmm. the idea at the time. It was about rebellion. It was about you know screw the same old shtick that we've been through so many years. It's time to do a new shtick. We are tired of it. Tradition bites. That was a whole idea. Many people caught on to that because at the same time, Marilyn Manson's Antichrist Superstar had came out that same year and people were picking up on his idea of rebellion. Yeah. So they kind of like, <clears throat> so fits to say that many M M Mansonites, as they called at that time, you know, would have uh, fell in with the NWO at the same time because it was all about anti-establishment. And like I said, you know, this, the NWO were the Sex Pistols of pro wrestling, and Eric Bischoff was their Malcolm McLaren, who, if you didn't know, was the manager of the Sex Pistols. 
he was the one who came up with that idea after seeing this you know, faction gimmick in in Japan there. Yeah. Uh, now, did you uh, have you ever been to any wrestling shows outside of Texas other than Michigan? Like, did no. you see? Any- no, I have not been into a wrestling uh, event in God knows how long. I think the, I think the last wrestling event I actually ever saw was back in the 1980s. You know, it was I, th- I think it was may have been. I think I'm trying to remember which the exact one, same one it was. I think it was, it was either the one that where my ma, dad, and me went to see Rowdy Roddy and the JYD. No, excuse me. It was Paul Orndorff and JYD taking on Rowdy Roddy and uh, Cowboy Bob Orton. Yeah. And Jesse the Body Ventura was also wrestling, who I was geeked up to see, but yet I was left disappointed because he didn't really uh, offer that much. Yeah. Uh, my um, my favorite thing when I when I got a little older, like when I was like. Um, like when I was a teenager, like uh, around like 13, 14, et cetera, like I was able to go, like, like my mind was able to concentrate more, like, uh, or understand. And like, uh, like I went uh, back and watched, like, second time I watched it, like, the first time I watched it was with my dad. And when I got a little older, I watched it by myself. Yeah. Uh. And like uh, I, I went back and watched like four or five and six like when I was like a teenager when I was able to watch it by myself. Wow. <laughs> like, you know, get more joy out of it, you know. I see there. I also got to bring up this one other wrestling event yeah. uh, back in, I think it was in the, um, I forgot, it was me and my dad. We had floor seats. So we were lucky, very almost close to the ring, you know. That event was like Woodstock to us. Everyone was talking with one another there. You know, I was talking to this one kid. Hey, I find I touch, I got to teach, I touch this performance. Yeah, good for you. We were talking about Brutus Beefcake, and they, had, they said how much he didn't like Brutus Beefcake, and I, and I had to add in. I said he's from San Francisco. That's where all the faggots That's come from. <laughs> Check this out, Dr. Earl. You and my dad would get along so well because I, I told, I, I, I remember, or I told you that my dad used to be a concert junkie. Yeah. Back in, back when uh, all the concerts were hot, back in the, like, 60s, 70s, like, you yeah. and my dad, my dad would be a great co-host for your guys' music maniacs. Mm, okay, there. Like, my dad, like, he, like, he would travel from state to state like like he would be like a rogue groupie like he would like whatever concert they heard about like he would be there ah interesting there like, he, like my dad probably saw like rolling stones like probably five times like my dad probably saw the kids like three four times uh, like, like he would tell me all these stories as a as me as a kid growing up like like i i saw kids are blowing out the flames and all this stuff like that yeah like, Gene doing that there like he would like when I'd be going to sleep like he would tell me bedtime stories about like like he would tell me about kids and like I'd be a little kid in bed like he'd tell me about kids in the flame and like at one of his random kids concerts mm, uh, yeah sleep <laughs> you know it's kind of funny you know uh, you remember the period when kids was mm-hmm. in their low peak you know they were all their audiences was being comprised of uh, 12 year old kids there boys girls yeah. and their parents coming in to see them wouldn't they wouldn't you know that those kids years on yeah. down the line would pick up guitars bass guitars drums yeah. learn to sing keyboards they would put together bands of their own yeah and when those bands would come out throughout the whole 1980s there one of them be a group called Firehouse Sebastian Bach from Skid Row, he's a huge KISS fan. So in a lot of ways that period where they were like, you know, catering to all these little munchkin kids out there kind of paved off in a way. Yeah, cuz uh I remember um my my favorite uh back in the day uh my my sisters and se- but I was around back then my dad mm-hmm. was, but uh yeah. when I got older <laughs> when I was able to listen to that old school music like uh like I, I like I love the. That's why I listen to you and uh, YR's music. Me, it's like uh, I'm learning a lot uh, 
from your guys' music mania. That's show, good but. to hear, man, because that's what we're trying to do. Because so many people out there are on un- are completely unaware of what's out yes. there, what was out before. Because you got to remember, so many kids of today are so concentrated on the stuff that's yeah. around them, which is being you know being shoved down their throats, and the yep. stuff that's being reissued now for the uh, are the basically the main ones, the main uh, sellers. Like for instance, you know the Eagles will probably go for a Hotel California, and that being reissued dude, I, and nothing else. Dude, I, I love Hotel California. That's mm-hmm. like one of my favorite songs. Did you ever uh, hear the story of the alleged supposed reason behind that song? No, but you can tell me here. Oh man, there was a lot of rumors that that song was about was about being in meeting a satanic church. Really? Yeah, there was. Know. Yeah, there was a lot. Uh, hence the lines, you know, uh, we haven't had that spirit here since 1969. Yeah. Another line saying you could check out any time, but you can never leave. Hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. And plus, there's the, something okay. else. And plus, there's something else. In the gay fold of that album, up in the balcony, they, they filmed a photo with the band members with all these, you know, different sorts of people, rich, you know, regular people. Up in the balcony is this mysterious figure. And many people have been come to believe that that figure may or may not have been Anton LaVey, who, had, who was the uh, founder of the Church of Satan. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, my when I when I got in my teens, like when I was a teenager, like my favorite old school bands, like I loved the Eagles, I loved Rolling Stones, <laughs> um, I loved um, ZZ Top, all that, all that shit. Oh, I loved nice, it. cool there. I, because my dad seen all those people in concert, all them people I named off. My dad seen them all. Wow. Like, like he wore them out, like. He probably saw ZZ Top like four times. That is interesting there, yeah. Yeah, he that those would be like my bedtime stories about his concert uh, stuff. Like that would be my bedtime stories. <laughs> interesting there. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh, now that's uh. Uh. Now what is what was your uh favorite movie uh, growing up as a kid? Oh well, oh I can honestly uh, start off with obviously Star Wars. Oh, you, oh, dude, I love Star Wars. Dude, I when I my mom took me and my sister to see the first Star Wars. At yeah. that time, was called Star Wars. And I was like, holy cow. When I first saw that Star Destroyer fly up above, I was like, holy cow. I was a little kid. Um, uh, Hang on, let me ask. uh, Yeah, yeah. Alexa, what year did the first Star Wars movie come out? 1977. Star Wars franchise. Star Wars, episode four, A New Hope, was released on May 25th, 1977. Booyah. 1977 May of that year yep and since that yeah, they I decided to release every two year every two years afterwards a new yeah. uh, episode in in the May of that whichever year Yeah I mean did you hear Alexa back there Yes <laughs> I did that's the female version of Hal 9000 to me there Yep <laughs> yeah When yeah. you think about it I mean, would you have you ever saw 2001 the Space Odyssey Yes now, yes. wouldn't you agree okay. that that movie foretold the technology that we have now? Yes, I. I and uh, I for did those like out that. there, don't, 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 for those who don't know what I'm talking about, there's a couple scenes where um, the two astronauts in there are see, having dinner, looking at a sky, looking at a conversation of being taken place between two people far, far away in different countries, and they have with them a couple tablets. Kind of like the tablets yeah, heard, that people are using today. Yeah, uh, and plus that movie also reminds me of the movie The Last Starfighter. Mm. Remember that one? Uh, I don't think I, I think I remember hearing that, but I don't think I ever saw that there. Yeah, it's a uh, it's the '80s movie where this kid, uh, I think if I'm talking about it right, where the kid playing a video game and yeah, um, and uh. 
and the aliens come and get him, and, uh, yep. and he's like on the spaceship or something. Yep, he's a sad. Uh, they probably it was a setup to him to see if they could find themselves a good fighter to fight the evil uh, troops that are coming for them. Hey, yeah. let's get this Earthling you now to help fight with us here. Yep. And uh, now, uh, what would your top five movies would be of all time? Well, number one would have to be, of course, you know, um, Star Wars, Episode Four, mm -hmm. New Hope. Uh, the yeah. second would have to be, you know, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Dude, I love that one. That's, so that's... did I, man. You know, that's how I first found out about Steven Spielberg, by the way, there, and his yeah. incredible work. And of course, and uh, number three would have to be the first Superman with um, yeah, Christopher I Reeve. Yeah, Christopher Reeve. Yeah, I, yeah. Dude, I got, I got Man of Steel, uh, uh, 2013 Superman poster, but I want to oh. get the original one. Uh, oh man, Man of Steel. Yo, Man of Steel had to be up on my uh, other list there of uh, a top five because yeah. that movie was so badass. The soundtrack, yeah, the effects, fun. and yeah. the acting. You know, um, Harry Cavill, Christopher Mel and I, you know, Russell yeah. Crowe, and uh, yeah. Michael Shannon, the guy who played General Zod. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that the storyline everything was all perfect for that movie. Yeah, absolutely there. It's kind of retelling of the first of the Christopher Reeve first Superman, yeah. but in a lot more technology days. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, now it was, they actually brought back Superman. Uh, the, uh, it's called Superman and Lois on, on the CW now. Oh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Remember when they had, you know, uh, Lois and Clark, the new adventures yeah, of Superman? Dude, was, yep, on, dude, on TV. Yeah, that was my that was my favorite TV show back in the day, Lois and Clark. I, uh, thank you for reminding me, telling me that I loved that TV show back in the day. Ah, oh, yeah, Clark, I loved that show. You know, I, I admit, I, I I have to admit, I have also been able to go clicking on YouTube to see a couple of scenes from the Supergirl, the CW series there as well. There, I watched that. I watched Supergirl. Yeah, well, yeah, I gotta say the lady who plays her is you know, pretty good as well there. Yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, now they they uh, they got uh, a Superman uh, and Supergirl, and he do, he plays the role pretty well. In, in Absolutely, the yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, now they're starting to enter, in, intertwine Superman within the Supergirl TV series. Yeah. Right Absolutely, I, of course, I, it's a crossover. That's how they call it. There, they yeah. did that with the Supergirl and the Flash. You know, they did they did that yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. Now, what is your uh, what is your third favorite movie? You know what? Uh, let's see. Hmm. 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 My, um, mine will have to be This Is Spinal Tap. I spoke about oh, this I movie. Heard of that one? Yeah. I heard of that movie. Yes, it was like a. What's where we first heard the term rockumentary was first yes. being used. Yep. Years before the that. old MTV would start using the narrow little thing there. Yeah. And you know what? I saw that movie with my mom, and you know what? She came out there saying, you know, that story is about the Beatles. Because yeah. you remember, the, the one of the member's girlfriend was trying to run things, allegedly, there. And that kind of was a thing about Yoko Ono. It's kind of like... Yeah. And, plus, and plus, here's something else. I, I mentioned this on the uh, arc, with the uh, arc and why, why are there. Yeah. There was a scene, remember the scene where that uh, Stonehead's little dinky stone head scenes that could drop down from the stage there and people were laughing such and such yeah you know that was inspired by the Stonehead's stage set that black sabbath had used a year earlier but instead of being small it was way massively big they could have had a trouble trying to get the, some of the parts of the set all the way through the venues that they were playing there it was a complete Apparently, it was a complete nightmare, according to the members. Yeah, um, yeah, because uh, I remember I actually watched that when I was uh, when I was a teenager, growing up. Spinal Tap, or the movie yeah. you just mentioned. Uh, yes. I, I remember watching that when, when I was a teenager. Oh, you know, I got the sound. I got the uh, soundtrack album. There, it was all black and stuff there. And yeah. I used to, when I used to go swimming in my in the pool, I would blast that album out. Oh yeah, it had a, yeah, it had a bad. I remember it had a badass uh, soundtrack. Yeah, absolutely, there are songs like Big Bottom, you know, Hell Ho, Tonight We're Going to Rock You Tonight. Those yeah, good songs now, there, yeah. Now, what would be your uh, your number four uh, movie? Uh, would it be? 
Mm, let's see. That's a hard one because I'm not good at when it comes to lists. You yeah. know, I'm. <clears throat> it's all right. I know. So um, I'm thinking possibly. Oh yeah, I gotta mention this one. Big Trouble in Little China, the ultimate guy big, movie, right the, there. Very classic. I love that one. Yeah, big. Uh, that was the ultimate guy movie, right there, folks. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. Oh yeah, Kim Cattrall, you know, um, Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's, that was one of my. Uh, that's one of my favorite uh, movies back in the day. All right, there. Now, what would your uh, okay for for your number five? What would your number? I think five? I think we already did uh, number. Uh, no, no, did I? Or did we already did the number five? I think we all mentioned that Star Wars Episode Four, Close Encounters, you know, Superman. Um, okay. Yeah, that would be your five then. Yeah, okay. there, there we go. All right, all right, all right. Okay. good there. Yeah, you're. Yeah, I, I think I lost. I lost I count. Lost yeah, I, yeah, I, I got lost in the shuffle somewhere. <laughs> But yeah, uh, now here's my top five uh, mm -hmm. growing up back in the day. Um, now for uh, it could be like a little bit of everything. Like this would be my top five like of all time. And like <laughs> I, I don't know if you consider them movies or not, but I I I do. But my my top five would be uh, the movie Purple Rain. Oh yeah, Prince. Yeah, the movie Purple Rain, because I love that movie so much. Um, that's one of my favorite movies is Purple Rain. All right, there. And I seen Prince twice in concert, by the way. Yeah, I think nice. I, missed that. I think I mentioned that on your guys' channel a, a few times. I see there. And then, uh, and then my second uh, movie is Michael Jackson Moonwalker. Uh, like, I remember, I remember seeing that when it first came out on the uh, video VHS uh, a couple of times on the Kmart there. Yeah, and then, um, and then my third <coughs> favorite movie would be uh, would be like a random uh, Superman movie, mm. and then, and then another one would be uh, Ghostbusters. I remember seeing that one there. Uh, the the first Ghostbusters, and then uh, and then maybe a random Rocky movie. Like uh -huh. those those would be like my top five. Any right? any of the Rocky movies I see there. Yeah, yeah well, it's all good. Ah. Yeah. Those would be like my top ultimate five right there. Yeah, and then sure the, there, yeah. And, and then the rest would be like whatever. <laughs> all right there. And then um, now did you like uh? Uh, any of the Rocky movies? Well, I only saw... I wasn't really much on big on the Rocky back then, but I remember seeing them a bit of clips here and there of Rocky Three there. Yeah. With, with the Mr. T as Clubber Lang, and of course Hulk Hogan, as we mentioned there. Now, uh... Now, um... Uh... Now... What was your, um... The favorite wrestlers like uh, in the year two thousands, uh, like, like in the modern era, like was you a fan of Stone Cold? I, I liked I dug Stone Cold there. I liked those, I like uh, what he represented. You know, he represented the working man sticking it to the corporate boss. Because yeah. around that time, you know, the corporate the word corporation was kind of like the uh, equivalent to the c word. You know. Yeah, I could see like. <laughs> Basically, that's almost. I could see Earl do something like that to Vince McMahon. <laughs> yeah, well, especially now, especially what Vince McMahon has been doing nowadays. You know, like I mean, so many people have been complaining that he should retire, or he should leave. You know, let Triple H get in there and start running the company. He could do some good justice to it. You know, because so many people have complained over and over how this pay-per-view stunk you know this uh, Monday Night Raw stunk this Smackdown stunk you know yeah. I mean Cronin giving it uh, this uh, thumbs down that thumbs down there I mean like a footage of a fan you know smashing his replica WWE title on the ground because he was so frustrated yeah. how that one hell in the cell with Riot the, with the Fiend and Seth Rollins, how that match ended. You know, people were frustrated over that. You yeah, know, and yeah. when you, th I mean, when you think about it, though, the plus with the business practices, you know, that we mentioned about a few times, you know, just <clears throat> really, you know, that company has been receiving lots of heat, you know. And oh, and by the way, see what you think of this. Now, yeah. 
I spoke about this a couple of times, you know. Liv Morgan, you know, not mm. really Liv Morgan. I'm talking about Lexa Bliss. Yeah. She took the heat from various WWE diehards when Bray Wyatt got let go. Yes. They took her out on her. They were to, to the point where she had to make her Twitter, Twitter private for the time being. And yeah. they did and they did the same thing with Naomi when her husband got into a the DUI. Now yeah. that that was now but why do you think they were taking it out on her? Yeah. Why do you think they would do that? Uh, probably because um, they probably might have had some beef, like behind the scenes. Probably. No, we don't know. Yeah, but no. But she did. Say, Alexa did say that she enjoyed working with Bray when he was still there. But yeah. for her, for them to take it out on her was just you know, simply wrong. You know, but th that wasn't her decision. It wasn't her fault. It was the fault of Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and. <clears throat> What's his name? Oh yeah, Bruce Pritchard, the former brother Love. Yeah. You used to remember he played that character for a good number of years there. Now cool. what happened with Jimmy Uso getting his DUI? That's Uso's fault, not Naomi's. I'm sure she was not happy about that just as well there. Yeah. And keep in mind, this is not the first time that he did this. Yeah. Now, was you um uh was you a fan of the Heart Foundation when when they formed back in the day? Um, the new one, uh, the back in the eighties or the later nineties version was uh, what it was a five piece. Uh, the the new one, the back in the nineties. But oh yeah, one. well it was a pretty good faction there when you look at it there. I guess they were trying to come up with their own little NWO running the muck causing trouble here and there, right? Like the NWO was doing in WCW there. Yeah, I got, but but the problem is you know the heart, you know pr the problem was you know I guess. I think what it was is that after seeing Hulk Hogan turn evil, turn to the dark side, like he did in WCW, Vince man, you know, hey, let's have you know Bret Hart, the biggest baby face, turn evil because he he's frustrated and angry at all the fans supporting Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold Steve Austin, and they were building that up for a long while there. I mean, the, the whole thing with Bret Hart, you know, imploding like he did, you know, saying, this is bullshit, this is such and such, blah, blah, blah. You know, I should try to have that title, that frustration coming out. Yep. Now, he would know, but then again, deep down, you got to remember, Bret Hart was really upset at everyone. He was upset at the change of the company standards and this and that, but you can't have it, things, you can't have things the same no matter what, you know. Yeah, now see, I I talked about this with uh, Sean's view one time uh, that that see Vince McMahon, the whole Montreal screw job. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, McMahon wanted Bret Hart to drop the title on in Canada, but yep. he, he Bret Hart said he would have dropped the title, but he didn't want to do it in Canada. Yeah, because Bret, because that's his home country, you know. Yeah, yeah you gotta remember Bret at that time is considered a hero at yeah. that time. And wouldn't it be heartbreaking to see your hero lose that title in your home country where he's from, especially in Alberta? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because, uh, um, um, but yeah, I remember uh, that, you know, um, he took it out on McMahon and... Uh, oh, yeah. And, like, so then... And Shawn Michaels was pissed, like, like, hey, he's like, why'd you do that? Like, why'd you screw Brett? Like, Shawn Michaels really didn't want to go through with it. I know, but nobody wanted to go through with it. I mean, the Undertaker, he was pissed off there. He said, you know, you should apologize to Bret Hart, you know? Yeah, yeah and Taker came out and said something about it. Uh, yeah, everyone was upset. You know, Mick Foley wanted to walk away. Hell, Rick mm -hmm. Root, he, he, when that happened, he immediately contacted Eric Bischoff from WCW and said, "Did you want me to come uh, come over there?" Yeah. And he, of course, you know, Rick Rude did. You know, the following night he made a promo with the NWO just addressing that issue. And at the same night, we saw Rick Rude on Monday Night Raw, which was taped a couple nights earlier. Yep. So we got fans got to see the late great Rick Rude on both Monday Night Tro and Monday Night Raw on the same night. Wouldn't yeah, you know? Yeah, because I was 
remember uh i remember rick rude showing up uh like the next or, or i think like the following week or i think it was actually like two weeks later rick rude like showed up and um i think that's what you're trying to say like uh rick rude showing up like two weeks later and and like i'm like everybody's shocked to see like and everybody thought he i'm like hey like isn't rick i thought rick rude was supposed to be with dx and like why is rick rude here in wcw yeah <laughs> but but then again you have to understand everyone was frustrated you know mick foley was upset you know everyone was upset you know um bret hart's wife she was extremely upset you know everyone if you ever saw the ending of wrestling with shadows she was like you know telling members you know of the wwe's roster including triple h i hope you can live with yourselves after this i hope you can uh, realize what you did was wrong you know and a lot of people were upset at mcmahon for that but then again that also gave gateway to the mr mcmahon character yeah. further on down the line that gave gave that helped gave way to the attitude era that helped gave way to what would be the most successful period in the WWF history. Yeah. Now, um, now, who was your favorite uh, wrestler in the uh, Hart Foundation? Was it Bret Hart, Owen Hart, the, the Bulldog? I didn't really have a wrestler, a favorite wrestler. I thought that all of them were uh, equally matched there. And it's just oh. sad you know, that Owen Hart could have reached new levels. You know, if he hadn't been taken with us. And by the way, let me ask you this. Yeah. AEW is going to have an Owen Hart tournament. And it was yeah. like, wait a minute, hold up. AEW did not exist, you know, under, uh, around that time. You think it's kind of oddballish that they're doing an Owen Hart tournament, even though he was not involved with AEW at that time? Yeah. It was kind yeah. of, you know, because we all know Brett, I mean, Owen Hart was still with the WWF when it was still called that. Yeah. You know, he was still contracted there. Like Shawn Michaels was, couldn't leave with um, Diesel and um, X-Pac and everybody else. You know, he couldn't leave because, you know, it was of that contract, you know. Nash, yeah. Nash and Hall were going to WCW and uh, <clears throat> they were wishing each other well, but, you know, and yeah. kind of interesting, you know, Triple H ended up getting punished because of that curtain call, by the way, as you know. Yeah, they they called it the famous curtain call because Triple H got in trouble for that, uh, too. Yeah, I know, yeah, he got punished, you know, he got lower than the mid-card status, but, you know, he took it, you know, came out to one of the top stars during the Attitude Era. Mm-hmm. With the, you know, the five-man DX and later as the biggest heel there. Yeah, and, uh, but... Thankfully, Triple H uh, didn't get punched for too bad because later on he, he won the King of the Ring. Yeah, that's true there. So I figure I mix make mix man society and all. Let's let it go there. Let's yeah. uh, get him some there. So yeah, thank so, goodness. So man, in a lot of ways, you know. And he put him in the King of the Ring tournament finally. Yep. yep. And of course now he's um I guess he's been demoted from his position. I guess what I understand just as well there. And now it's um. Bruce Pritchard and Vince, Vince McMahon, and I guess somebody else running NXT. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, they're yeah, because uh, Triple H had a, a heart attack, and and I guess Triple H is taking some time off, and I guess he's being forced to retire. I, I think, and I think another and, reason may have been because NXT hasn't been really doing that much, you know, in terms of. Yeah being in the competition, being AEW at that time. And I guess, you know, deep down, Vince McMahon is getting all upset, you know, hear about AEW this, AEW that. And, well, one time, Sami Zayn mentioned AEW during the during audition of Monday Night Raw, and I guess he got his ass chewed off for that, you know. But when you think about it, AEW has been um, getting everybody that used to be with the WWE with the former Rusev, the former Ruby Riot, the former Aleister Black, you know, they had a lot of people coming in. I mean, the former Daniel Bryan. Well, when you think about it, everyone's going there. Oh yeah, Adam Cole, he's now involved in it. Yeah, now his well. uh, yeah, now his group is there, the Undisputed Errors over there now. Yeah, that's right. Mhm, yep. But he can't call the Undisputed Era because he always belongs to the WWE slash NXT, so they have to call yeah. it the Elite. 
Yes. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, was you a fan of the, or or did you ever like the Ultimate War Warrior back in the day? Yeah, was, he was a pretty good, interesting guy. But like, when you think about it, this here was a Marvel Comics comic book superhero, yeah. kind of similar to Thor, coming into the WWF at that time there. Yeah. And you know, when you think about it, you know, the Ultimate Warrior had that super massive superhero, powerful complex to it. It's just, you know, kind of ironic that years later we find out what a prude he was behind the scenes there. He went, I guess he wanted all the things that Hulk Hogan wanted, you know, um, the pay-wise, I guess, and I found out he was a um, bitch to work with. Yeah, now, uh, now was you a, a fan of uh, Razor Ramon, the bad guy back in the day? Yeah, it was pretty cool there. He was had a pretty bo- yeah. good gimmick there when you think about it. I mean, Scott Hall kind of like... Scott Hall had this gimmick where he was like a representation of the uh, Tony Montana, the Scarface idea complex there, when you look at it. Of course, minus the scar in his face. Yeah, uh, now, uh, um, was you a fan of The Undertaker back in the day? Oh, yeah, I, was, I, always, I always had a, I had a deep respect for him because he was this dark guy here was this man with the dark side you know coming out as the hero i used to dress yeah. very gothic back in the 1990s and people would either call me johnny cash or the undertaker a couple of times right. there because of my height i'm six four yeah that's cool um uh now uh did you like him when he was the american badass it was interesting yeah with that long ass trench coat, his hair tied back, you know, I didn't really yeah. care for the Limp Biscuit theme song because I was not big on yeah. Limp Biscuit there. Yeah, uh, oh, you you're not a fan of Limp Biscuit? No, never was. I'm uh, not into. Can... Never was into rap metal, and I'm still not into it now. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, I mean, like I said, I'm half awake here, so uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying. Uh, be speaking like an hour 30 minutes so we're on like an hour 20 minutes right, right now so, there. Like, right. so we'll probably end it here shortly okay so, gotcha uh, yeah so uh but yeah um uh i'm trying to think of some like five more wrestlers that <laughs> uh, you would probably uh enjoy talking about uh, uh how about this how about five wrestlers you would love to have a have a conversation in on the dinner uh, table. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, that's a good topic. Uh, probably Triple H. Um, All right. Vince McMahon. Um, and then probably Shane McMahon. And then probably Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then probably uh. Probably the Undertaker. Alrighty then, nice. Because they, they know more about the business than anybody. All right. So I would. Your top five would, would be to have a my top with. five would have to be you know, uh, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby oh. Heenan. You know, one or two right there. You know, have the dinner, have dinner with them with those two going at yeah. it. You know, me uh, interluding in here and there. Did you ever watch a table with three back in the day? No, I don't have the WWE ne- network uh, there. But go ahead with your, with your 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 top five. I would have a, a good conversation with you. I'll definitely hit it off with Bailey there because it would, yeah. in terms of her reference to the uh, people out there being a quote unquote yeah. sheep, and I could relate to that one hundred and twenty percent because lots of people nowadays are absolutely sheep they follow along what's on social media and they go with it you know they follow all these different beliefs you know what's right and what's wrong even they, they believe they don't know what's right is really wrong you know and so many people fall into these little categories like sheep you know and i agree with that yeah i agree with that there's so many people out there that are just totally blind they just follow along with no uh, consequences, you know. So I could definitely uh, tell a lot of stories about what sheep is, you yeah. know. I could talk to them and definitely tell her about that. So who would, okay, you said Grandma Monsoon for your first one. Who would, your, or 
and you said Grandma Munson, and then you said Bobby Heenan, and that's your second, so it was your third one. Would, would be, be. The third one was the one I mentioned, Bailey. Oh, okay, Bailey. Okay, so it would be your fourth one. Oh, yeah. The third, oh, the, the fourth would have to be Rowdy Roddy Piper because I love hearing the stories that he would he would tell about the early years when he his correct in his wrestling career. Yes, by the way, you should yeah. probably check out his uh, promos and stuff when he was involved with the NWA prior to joining WWF there, which is pretty yeah. good, interesting, especially his uh, promo on Buzz Mad Dog Sawyer. Yeah. Now, I would squeeze in probably Hulk Hogan because he knows a lot about the wrestling business, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to have dinner with Hulk Hogan. Like, yeah. the, like what you got to do when Hulk Hogan yeah. eats this pizza all over you? Yeah. My foot, you know what? I should probably mention this. My top five or the last five would have to be Jim Cornette. Yeah. Because, you know, oh, I would love Sorry. to hear the type of exchange story. Here are the stories he has to tell about all his early areas of wrestling. What was going on with the NWA. What was going on with Smoky Mountain. You know, Major League Wrestling. Now, okay, <laughs> now, let's let's close out with this. Then we can maybe talk about uh, the up and coming stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, um, I, um, my... Uh, my f uh, favorite <laughs> growing up was probably Jake the Snake Roberts with this mm -hmm. whole uh, snake gimmick like, there. Yeah, snake gimmick and the DDT. I loved that as a kid growing up. Yeah. You like Jake the Snake Roberts? I did dig him, yes. He was, had a pretty good menacing persona about him. I know my... <clears throat> What the, the big uh, when he had this snake with him, that yeah, people stood up massively when they saw that thing really being let out of the bag there. That was one of his biggest you know, moments there. Now, do you remember when uh, when Jake Roberts uh, took the King Cobra out of the bag and it bit the Macho Man on his arm? Yes, I remember that. They had to X that X that out and further bro and further footage there. Which, by yeah. the way, the um, Cobra was de-venomized, I guess it were yeah. terms it. So that way, you know, Macho Man wouldn't die and all that stuff there. Yeah, I hope it was de-venomized. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know. Because, of course, you know, he would, of course, he came up with this gimmick. They would send to the hospital, such and such yeah, there. Yeah, because he was still bleeding when it was biting him. It yeah, was because cause it was, because, remember, those were real fangs there. Yeah. Yeah, when that snake bit him on the on his on his like shoulder arm, like he was bleeding like for real, and all the little kids in the audience was crying. Oh yeah, I go I couldn't blame him, you know. But keep in mind that venom, like I said, he wasn't really venomous. They had to de-venomize him. They had to take out all the venom out of him. For I understand there. Now, okay, now, last topic now, and then we'll close out the show. All so, right, good, good. Uh, what was your favorite WrestleMania of all time? Um, my favorite WrestleMania, when I only saw two WrestleManias, believe right. it or not. One that was in, the first one was back in 1985 with my dad, with uh, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T taking on Paul Orndorff and Rowdy Roddy Piper. That would, yeah. uh, and the second one would had to be um, I saw with my dad was in the, um, it was the, of course WrestleMania two with Hulk Hogan and King Kong buddy in the steel cage there, three different locations. Yeah, Keep I in remember, mind there. Yeah, I remember watching that when I was a teenager. Yeah, absolutely. My favorite out of the two would have to be the first one because like it, it was the first one there, and it was a massively big setup at that time yeah, there. Yeah, Garden, yes. Yeah, you know, we couldn't hardly hear the uh, people. Couldn't hear what was being spoken over the loudspeaker there because everybody was cheering and this and that, you know. But I remember they had actually, believe it or not, they had so sort of a little footage there. Um, I guess it was Paul Order was supposed to cut a promo. They were supposed to play later on, but it ended up showing on the big screen that people were like cheering. Oh yeah, boo, uh, you know, and just you know. It was an amazing time for wrestling back then. And keep in mind, this was closed circuit TV, not pay pay per view. They would okay, not back. they would not do that until the next WrestleMania, which was the second one in 1986. Yeah, because yeah, back in the day, uh, before pay per view, it was closed uh, circuit TV. Yeah, absolutely. I, there. What my dad told me. 
So yep. when I was a kid, it was a closed circuit TV, what my dad told me. That's true there, yes. And now we got pay per view, so running the muck everywhere there. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, now here's, I'll close out with my favorite screen, then we'll maybe make an announcement after this. So, okay. Uh, so, um,. Uh, my favorite WrestleMania of all time was, like I said, was WrestleMania because that was my first one, and then, uh, and then my second one would probably would be uh, WrestleMania Eight, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, and then my third one would be uh, WrestleMania uh, Fourteen when Austin won the title for the first time. All right, Re WrestleMania Fourteen. And then, uh, and, and then my third third one would be uh, probably WrestleMania 17 when the Austin turned heel. Oh wow! And then, of course, my last one would be uh, WrestleMania 18, uh, The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. Did you ever see that one? I heard about it there at the Sky Dome in Toronto, Canada. Yeah. Oh wow! There, Icon versus Icon. And that we yes. would see Hulk Hogan return to the WWE at that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was like his. Yeah, that was like his ultimate comeback. It was and the mo and the standing ovation he got after the month on the following Monday Night Raw was tremendous. Yes. Yeah, and then he finally transitioned over back to the yellow, uh, red and yellow. Uh, back. Uh, yes, absolutely. The Hulk Hogan yeah, like, we know and love pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, he came back like a couple weeks uh, later um, with the uh, Hulkamania cults. Yes, you know, credit the Hogan, you know, credit the Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He, not only did he, he did it, he made wrestling, you know, popular in the 1980s and in the 1990s as well. He did it. Yeah. For, yes. So he did. He would help bring the wrestling to the multimedia, to the mainstream world, not once but twice. Yeah. In the eighties, as the biggest baby face, and in the nineties, as the biggest heel. Yeah. Now, yeah, because um, yeah, Hulk Hogan was the biggest heel in the in the mid nineties. Uh, yeah, he that's was. Why. Yeah. Growing up, and uh, and they were still cheering for him, no matter what. That's why I was in W uh, Black and White. That's why I wore the colors proudly. And mm -hmm. like I said, if I came across or if I saw any red and black, I would flick them off. Like fuck yeah. you. Oh gosh. Yeah, like I wore my black and white proudly. Uh, yeah, but I will but, say this, you know, and before we close, uh, close yeah. this, I'll just show. There yeah. was, I'll bet you. Every union worker throughout the whole Attitude Era was given, yeah. they looked up to Stone Cold Steve Austin as their main hero. Not yeah. once did you ever see a, a union worker say, I love the Vince McMahon character. Yeah. I love the Mr. McMahon. He's a good guy. And they would not say that and not get a smack across the head. Yeah, no, <laughs> the, yeah, the the attitude there was like the best ever because I thought that they had good uh, it had good storylines. Uh, they were unscripted back then. Yep. And like they spoke with uh, an open mind, and like they just didn't they just didn't give a fuck back then. And back then, and, and sadly, we don't have that nowadays because WWE, when it became a public trading company. They had to now restrict themselves from the offending all the shareholders in their stock, and because of that, you know, they have to uh, tone things down. Yeah, and yeah. there's stuff. It's stuff you can't do nowadays, and it gets what pisses off so many people from wrestling fans from back then. It's like now they had to tone things down. Now here's one last topic, and we can actually close out with okay, this. Okay, gotcha. So one last thing. All right. So, was you a big fan of Sting? Hold on a second, there. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Or take your time. All right. I was a big, more bigger fan of the Crow Sting. Yes. That was the main thing. I always dug the heavy coat, him growing out his hair. That was the ideal look that I liked. Yeah. All right. 
So hey, I, the Serper, the uh, Sting, I wasn't that, that much into. Yeah. So uh, now, yeah, I love Sting. Uh, you know when he debuted, and uh, you know then when he became the the, the, the crow. crow Sting, yes. Yeah, uh, everybody called him the Crow Sting. I, I thought that was badass. And yep, the uh, anti-hero who was a hero. Yeah, and then uh, he feuded with the NWO, which was badass. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, so here's the announcement. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, if we could get Ark Noli on board, we could call it Wrestling Maniacs. Maybe right. they can get permission from YR to use that. Maybe <laughs> again, we could probably talk to talk about that. You know, uh, we'll have to probably. Somewhere. Well, I'm. A, I have to bring it up with Ark Noya this <clears throat> coming up for Thursday because that's the only day I have off for this week. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, um, he'll be on board with that one. There, I have to. I'll yeah, talk to the guys about, during our show uh, on that day. Wrestling, uh, wrestling maniacs. Yeah, you know, that and, sounds like a good idea there. But of course, I'll you know, figure out figure out a good time slot because of my work schedule. It'll have to be interest something to do there. Yeah, so but I would have to get permission from Wire to use that maniac look that you know. All right, there. <laughs> so let me get permission from Wire first, and then yeah, hey, definitely call. How? Yeah, I know Wire came back earlier after his you know, Christmas vacation there yeah, with I his think dad there. He was tired so, or So, yeah, I know he was. So, did, were you surprised to see us together at the same spot? That's uh, Christmas Eve. <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it was awesome. You know, like, and I don't think it was a coincidence when the fireworks went off. The fireworks went off for a reason. It was because of you guys. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the Christmas fireworks because it was um, red and green there. But it was yeah, good that we I, finally got I, to meet and you know, make noise, make news when we did that. Yeah, but I, I think the fireworks were going off because you guys finally met. But that's just fine. Uh -huh, yeah, there. That's you know, I'm, like, and when I think about it, there, when I, I'm checking my channel right now, see how those two shows are doing there, because it was a part one and part two. It's like holy shell, holy cow! It was like. I had the most views when I streamed from my yeah. phone, believe it or not. Nice. <clears throat> that show, yeah, the, the part one, got has now received over 342 views. Um, this part two received about 234 views there. That gained me a lot more subs. But still, yeah, the but one I did on Hannibal, the wrestler a couple weeks back you know where he what he did to that referee there was that yeah. still has received over 10k views that was two yeah. weeks ago and i'm still getting comments about that video yeah <laughs> oh yeah they're probably encouraging you to do more probably right yeah well so i often get encouragement from a couple of people to do uh, more guitar played videos I'm getting encouragement, you know, to do this, you know. I'm getting to, you know, do more topics about the uh, the ex Kiss guitar player Vinnie Vincent because I did a couple of promos on him there. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, do you think if I could get uh, Sean and you on board, I it could be like me, you, and uh, Sean and you and Ark Noy, like us four, because Sean, you us, know, me, you mean also YR as well? It'd be us five, or maybe us five. Yeah, it'd be a, that sounds a good good option there. I'm surprised he's not on board right now in this conversation. I tried, I tried to add Sean to you. I guess he's unavailable. So I'm right, probably sleeping at this moment there because yeah. it is you know yeah. uh, after uh, two in the Eastern time area there. Because I know Sean you would love to be a co-host for Wrestling Mania. No, it sounds like a good idea there. You know what? Yeah. Listen, yeah, all right. So I'm gonna hit the hay. I got work the next yep. morning for the next couple of days yep. there. All right, Doctor O. Thank you for coming on. All right, uh, thank you for having me, Bullfrog. Uh, no problem. Uh, so right. hopefully, um, uh, let Argnolia know we're going to be doing maybe Wrestling Mania uh, episode two, like down the road. Maybe I could have him and uh, Sean's view and like us five and the YR. All right. You know, us five only. Well, but tell you what we'll talk about well me yr and uh keith you know and arc we'll talk about it possibly on uh, this coming thursday there and i know um we'll definitely yr will definitely uh talk about it he'll probably hit me up about the concept later on to before thursday i'll bet you
Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, Terry. All, right. All right. I'll I recorded this. I'll upload this on my channel pretty soon here. Yeah. That that's okay. All right, Terry. All right. You have, have a, a good you have a good one there, Bullfrog. Are right, you too? All right. I, I enjoyed our show tonight. So did I. Did so did I. Have a good one, dude. Okay. All right. Bye bye. All right. You too. All right. Bye.